Welcome to Books, where two guys decided they're going to keep telling you about the books they're reading. I'm Rob Olson. And I'm Livia Snedden. I, mean, I think we were pretty honest about it not being our last episode last episode, <laughs> yeah. right? Wait, yeah. oh, that was our last episode. It was our, well, <laughs> if you're talking about like the last episode was. Holy shit. That's weird, man. <laughs> That was like a psychic premonition. Like I said, it was going to be our last episode. And now when I talk about it, it's the last episode. It was the last episode, yeah. Well, luckily, oh. it won't be that forever. So, Right. Um, yeah. Well, That's so great. I was texting with um, Adam, whose legs don't work, earlier mm-hmm. today. Um, and uh, he, he he's in town. And he wanted to see about... He was having coffee with some cousins of his. And he wanted to see if I wanted to come out. And I said I had to do the podcast. And he he said... You're recording the one after the last one ever, and I said, "Yeah, that that's the one." So oh, there may well, be a little confusion out in the world. In the event that you see Adam, <laughs> whose legs don't work, um, tell him I said hello. Give him a big hug from me. We'll do, man. Speaking of friends of the podcast, uh, so this is going to be an interlude episode. I guess I didn't mention that um, we spent the week celebrating our seven-year anniversary. And uh, one of the things we did uh, in celebration was uh, Jesse and Misty, our permanent co-hosts on the holiday extravaganzas, were uh, both were in town. So we spent some time hanging out with them, but it wasn't all fun, was it, Rob? We did. We tried to do some work. We tried to follow up on a promise we made yeah. last year. Yeah, we uh, we did. And I want to say, as you were saying that, I thought to myself, oh, we should have done like a like a company photo. Because we had everybody together, and we didn't do that. Um, so that's a missed opportunity. It totally um, is. But yes, so uh, on episodes past, uh, we did we did threaten to do the Cuba Road investigation, where we would uh, we had talked in, in previous episodes about um, Cuba Road in Barrington, which is near where I live, having um, several different haunted uh, haunting legends, and we were going to go investigate um, as you know. As a group, and we decided to do that. We did. We stuck with it. We did it. And um, wow, what do you think about the results of that? <laughs> so I was going to say is I think listeners, as you're as you're explaining this, are probably thinking, well, where's where's the content? Yeah. Uh, you know, the content um, wasn't really podcast worthy. Now I'm not going to say there weren't some things that aren't discussion worthy that uh, occurred um, in hindsight, but. We, we did video, uh, two different ways of video. So I videoed the inside of the car um, in hopes that there was enough lighting that if this went well, you know, we could do kind of like the, the, the reaction video. Um, lighting was terrible because it was nighttime. Mm-hmm. Um, we also audio recorded the whole thing. And then Rob uh, sporadically uh, did videos when, when we came across things that may have been of interest. Um, turns out we didn't really get anything, though, right? I mean, there was really nothing... Um, by my recollection, um, recollection, I was chewing on ice earlier and you know how it numbs up your mouth a little bit. Anyway, by my recollection, uh, we saw three raccoons and <laughs> at least a, three raccoons, a plastic bag full of garbage that looked in the shape of a rabbit. The plastic bag was a little creepy. Uh, so <laughs> but let's, let's take a step back. This is how it went. Um, Rob lives just mere moments from, from Cuba road by moments. I mean like five minutes. We hopped in the car, we got the video stuff going and we drove over there and essentially it is a very long straight road. Um, 25 mile an hour speed limit roughly. Right. Like yeah. it's that kind of small two two lane, two lane road. That is pretty creepy because there are no street lights and uh, at one point, the, the trees have kind of converged over the road. So it kind of has this weird, like, tunnel kind of feeling. Right. So I will say it's definitely a creepy road to drive down. Um, so at one point, the right thing to do was just to turn around and come back. And that's when we encountered the the, the bag. So, like, we, we kind of, you know, went off to the, to the right a little bit to kind of make a U-turn. And then there's just this bag in, in the shape of a rabbit on Easter. <laughs> just like right in front of where the car was yeah but um, it was very clearly a bag of uh it was like when someone goes to the grocery store and then uses that bag to like clean out the garbage out of their car and then just throws it in the road you know how that is right um yeah yeah so yeah yeah but that was that was the the scariest thing we encountered 
And I'm gonna I'm gonna debunk this one a little bit. Um, it did happen, but in on um, uh, reviewing my videos, because here's the thing: we we went through and we recorded all these videos. And any anybody who's watched any of those stupid ghost hunting TV shows knows that like some of the creepy stuff only a- appears after the fact when you're reviewing the footage. And so I was watching my videos and um, uh, on earlier videos because we had passed with a place where we did the turnaround where the fucking rabbit bag was. We we had passed that before and the bag was there. The whole time. <laughs> so, oh, okay. It's not like it magically appeared. It was, <laughs> it had been there the whole time. So there's no mystery uh, around the garbage bag. It was just a garbage bag and just, it was just there. Yeah. Now, you guys may think that sounds totally lame um, that we just drove up and down this road, but we didn't just drive up and down this road. At one point, we actually went into the cemetery that is one of the actual. Um, you know, uh, locations that people have seen. It's glowing headstones and floating orbs and stuff. We went into that cemetery at yeah. night, um, past any time that we should have been in that cemetery, I might add. Um, and we did go in there. <clears throat> now, we didn't stay very long because I was very concerned that someone was going to call the police on us. Uh, the cemetery itself is very, very small and only has... Uh, like the the little, I don't even want to call it a road. It's like a little strip of cement that you come in on, and then there's just one, I don't know, lane that you can drive down. So it's very tiny. It's maybe 30 yards wide, 40 yards wide, and, you know, 100 yards long. Yeah. So um, it's very tiny, but we did pull in there, and we probably sat in there for about five minutes. Does that sound yeah, accurate? we gave it a good, yeah, few minutes. Yeah, we didn't see anything. Um, but I will tell you that was fairly I, – I am proud of us for being courageous, not in facing uh, – not, not in just facing the supernatural, but facing you know, legal problems in order to try to bring content uh, to yeah. the podcast. The law. Yeah. Go um, up against the law. Booked would have had a whole new, whole new meaning. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, the, the everything was very uneventful. Um, and even like, you know, in the moments where you're trying to fill time, because we're, we're like driving along and we're aware that everything's being recorded. So you want to kind of have content. And um, I got to say that either they didn't bring it this time or, or they just weren't, I don't know, in the spirit. But Jesse and Misty were not the most entertaining <laughs> guests. Yeah. Um, Misty, at one point we stopped to get gas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Misty was sitting um, in, in, in the back seat behind me. I was driving. We were in my car. So as I get out and I, you know, I turn around to put the pump in, it, it's essentially right behind where she's sitting. I just happen to glance in the window and she's like shopping on like the Sephora website. So clearly there was uh, either a, a big Sephora promo going on <laughs> or we just weren't being um, interesting enough to keep her attention. Very time, time sensitive Sephora sale. Um yeah, and I was trying to get some, like, hey, what kind of unexplained things have happened in your lives, guys? And they're just, like, fucking crickets. The Sephora fucking coupon isn't working. Explain that, Rob. Yeah, unexplained, yeah. 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 <laughs> so we made the attempt. We spent, I would say, uh, about 40 minutes. Yeah, that sounds 40, about 45 right. minutes um, in total in the in the excursion. And, um, well, it didn't turn out much, but I didn't expect to. But here's here's my thought. Having gone through a very uneventful Cuba Road experience, um, and I, all right, I'm going to pause to say I want to thank everybody who on Facebook responded to my uh, question about you know if anybody had had experiences or heard stories about Cuba Road because that definitely helped us kind of frame our understanding of what what we could expect to see. So thanks for everybody who um, repl- replied to that. Um, but but it being as uneventful as it is really kind of encourages me to try other things. I can't wait until we find a 10 floor elevator that we yeah. have like unobstructed <laughs> access to. That's really what elevator I want. game for sure. I, I think I, that shouldn't be that hard, right? I mean, we live, we live near Chicago. The problem is going to be uninterrupted. You yeah. Know, Cause the elevator yeah. game probably requires 15 minutes of nobody else Trying getting on elevator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but Here's the weird thing. We've come to the end of our Cuba Road experience, right? 
But a couple weird things did happen that bear mentioning. Sure. These didn't happen until afterwards. So we uh, we do, you know, we do this and then we go back to Rob's place and we're kind of just sitting around shooting the shit. And as Rob's like looking through his phone, um, like I said, he took, I would have to, and, and you would probably know the exact number, like five different videos, right? Where you kind of started and stopped, yeah. started and stopped. Well, he started one when we got into the cemetery. And that video is probably about five minutes long. And then we left and I'm assuming he stopped the video. When we get back, he says, the video from the cemetery isn't on here. Yeah. So I go, that's, that's a little weird, right? And uh, as he says that, I go and I check my phone, um, which was, again, videoing us and not, you know, outside the car, but was videoing into the car. And I noticed something a little odd that right after we left the cemetery, now I have three witnesses to this. I, I put the phone, I had actually purchased a windshield mount for the phone just for this, uh, just for this excursion. I put it on there. I started the, the, the video on the phone and I did not touch it until we pulled back in um, at Rob's place the whole time. Yep. Yeah. So I go, oh, man, the video ends early it ends right after we left the cemetery that's weird because i didn't turn off till we get here but i noticed that there is a second video file that was created and it's essentially uninterrupted like one goes right into the other but it stopped and started and like i said you know with three witnesses in the car i never touched the phone so it wasn't me i i didn't see anybody else touch it i was driving rob would have been the only one so my phone created two files and at least at that point for, for a little while, the video of the cemetery was missing from Rob's phone. Yeah, um, and, and to point out, I was very aware of, of the time counter on um, the devices. So, like, um, obviously the, the audio, we have a digital audio recorder, and, you know, that recorded the whole thing start to finish. And, and, and I was looking at Livius's phone when we pulled in at my place just to see, like, about how long the whole video was. And it was like... It was like 42 minutes or something like that. But um, if I'm correct, Livius, like you have the two separate videos and neither of them are 42 minutes long, right? That is correct. So somehow that continuous counter of 42 minutes turned into two separate videos that I'm assuming add up to around the 42 minutes or whatever. Yeah. Um, on my side of the camp, like Livius said, when we were sitting around my apartment, I had one video that we took and then uh, it, we broke it up by uh, going in and Livia's got gas. And um, so I had a video that was up to the point where we went to get gas and then nothing after that. Although I had like three more videos after that. Um, I, sh I didn't see any of them on my phone. And then um, after Livia's left, I happened to look at my phone again because it was just really perplexing. And then like three or four more videos had shown up in the meantime after he left. So I don't know what to attribute that to, but we had two um, two phones act um, bizarrely. Now, at the to same be fair, time, I, yeah, I don't shoot much video on my phone, so I don't know. I mean, this could happen, I guess, anytime I try to shoot forty five minutes on my phone. I'm just not a video person. I yeah. take a few photos here and there, so I'm not going to attribute it to the supernatural. But the more I thought about it afterwards, I was like, you know, that is something odd that happened. You know, we could have just we could dismiss it to just, you know, whatever cell phone tomfoolery or whatever. But there's a couple of weird things did come out of that, uh, out of that excursion. Yeah, we were mildly inconvenienced. <laughs> so um, there you go, guys. First hand experience with Cuba Road. Not scary, but you may have to, you know, uh, be careful with the videos you record. <laughs> Rob and I may uh, venture out on our own and, and do something like this again if uh, if an opportunity presents itself because I had fun doing it. Yeah. I just don't. Uh, the only reason you guys aren't hearing is I just don't think, and, and Rob backed this up by going through the videos and stuff, that there's anything of value to someone to, you know, else to, to see or hear. Yeah, a couple funny moments, you know. They may yeah. show up at the end of the episode if I get really um, adventurous, but <laughs> that's about it. Uh, that was not uh, the end of our uh, celebration of our seven-year anniversary, though. On Monday, the following day, uh, we did uh, spend uh, spend a good portion of the day out in Chicago, the big city, um, with our uh, with our co-hosts. Yeah, um, we started that that trip with um, a place that we I think we'd all had gone to before, but really enjoy in Chicago. If you like burgers, this place has been named like the best burger in the country several times. We went to Oshaval 
and uh, had some burgers, which was very nice, um, very tasty, um, and no wait. Usually, and the thing about it is, like, this is a place where you know you go there and you're going to wait an hour and a half no matter what. We got there, they're like, yeah, it's going to take 15 to 30 minutes. We're like, yes, yeah. please. Before, um, before our food came, the line was probably 15 people waiting. So yeah. we got there ex- exactly when we got there pretty early in the day. But yeah, we got there at exactly the right time. Um, our second stop on that trip, I want to talk about a little bit because <laughs> I'm still kind of affected by it. <laughs> For anybody who's from the Chicago land area, you probably heard the commercials or even, you know, as likely to have been at a store called The Alley, uh, which, I mean, since I was probably 10 or 12 years old, was a. Uh, uh, a destination for me. If I can get my parents to take me there when I got older, I could hop on a bus or when I got a car, it was, you know, at least once or twice a month, I'd go to the alley and the alley was your kind of standard, um, alternative shop. It was like the hot, to- it was like hot topic. If hot topic was like a really serious store, do you think yeah. that's an accurate kind of description? So yeah, combat boots, punk band, t-shirts, um, uh, you know, d- different, um, they, they used to have like the patches that went on your jean jacket yep, um, and pins and stuff like that. And the guy who owned that, um, expanded that into several other stores at, at one point. So there was taboo taboo, which was a, uh, a, like a sex toy and lingerie shop. And then do you remember what the one was where they all the plaster sculpture sculptures, architectural revolution, architectural revolution. Yeah. yeah. And some other ones that kind of came and went, well, a couple of years ago, um, the alley closed and it closed, I, I believe, in large part or in all part uh, due to uh, Target, the Target Corporation buying up all <laughs> of that land yeah. uh, and building a Target. So, you know, it was kind of sad. That was a place I spent a lot of time at and always looked forward to. And even as an adult, if we were ever in that area and I could just, you know, make an extra 15 minutes, I'd always pop in the alley, sometimes just to look around, sometimes to buy something. And usually I just bought something for like nostalgia's sake. I mean, you know, in my late 30s, I wasn't really looking for for a lot of like, you know, studded leather jackets or, you know, or wallets with chains. Yeah, and that kind nipple thing. rings. Right. So yeah, for yeah, for a while they were doing piercings. Like they had a piercing studio there. And tattoos. They were doing tattoos in the in the alley. Interesting. I don't know if I ever knew that. Yeah. I'm guessing that probably was right around the time of the piercings. So um, <laughs> well the uh they wound up opening, you know, like a I think it even says it in the store, a pop up shop. Yeah. Um, which what the fuck does a pop up shop mean? What does that mean? Because I, I don't I, I I thought I knew what that meant, but then I was at the alley and and now I'm not so sure. Well, I mean, every time I've experienced a pop up shop, it's like it's it's a temporary shop in a space that's like not. It's a temporary shop, basically, like you know, um, either in another uh, business or in a in a space they're using just for a small period of time. All right. Well, the alley has one of those. So I dragged all three of these guys to it and I knew what was going to happen. I was like, I'm going to be <laughs> very super sad about this. And uh, my, my my premonition held true, um, although it was kind of cool to see that they were still in business. It now looked a lot and felt a lot more like a hot topic <laughs> than it did you know, <laughs> in, the, in the late 80s and, and mid 90s. Um, and it was just it was like too clean and too, I don't know, and really, really small. Yeah, and it was like, like it was well. And the, here's the funny part: so we we find parking, and uh, we know uh, Livius has the address of the place, and we know the general layout of the area because like Livius and I um, had both spent a lot of time around there, so we basically knew where we were. We just didn't know the exact spot of the um, where the alley had had taken over. And jokingly, Livius points to a few buildings which were like kind of like three story. Um, like typical Chicago apartment kind of buildings, but like with um, commercial proper uh, uh, area space on the bottom. And he points to this kind of grouping of buildings. He says, it could be any one of those apartments up there. And then we get to the place and we go in and the actual shop is upstairs in what would have been an apartment. It was exactly what you said it was. Yeah, and it, uh, I don't know, it it induced some sadness in me, um, both then and then later that night when I was thinking about it. I was like, I'm just so bummed. It's, 
I don't know. What what is that saying? You can never go back home. Isn't that what it is? Yeah, you can never go home again. I think. Yeah, or you something like that. Home. Yeah, yeah. I think that's true. I mean, more and more, the things that that you loved and cared for, when you revisit them after so long, um, if it's a current, if it's a current entity, never holds up to your um, your memories of it. Now, I don't know yeah. if that's your memories that do that, or <laughs> if it's just the times that change. Um, even movies, you know, there, there've been a number of movies that I haven't seen that I always thought, God, I really love that movie. I really love that TV show. And you get an opportunity, it sneaks up on you late at night on cable or something. You go, Oh God, I used to love this. And you put it on and you're like, Oh, I remember this being so much better than it is. I mean, we can kind of apply that like low key on we to like, I think we were talking a little bit about this. Um, the fact that we just celebrated seven years as a podcast, in over time things change and after seven years of of doing this you know to me it feels like it we just got started with this it doesn't feel like seven years have gone by but i mean if you look at the list of authors that we've talked to you really start to realize oh this person's not even writing anymore that person's not even writing anymore um and the groups that we used to like get together and and do book related things with it's all kind of they're not groups anymore. Drifting apart. And so it, it's 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 weird for us because we have a listener base, you know, outside of that, obviously. But um, it, it's almost like we have to figure out our identity without those things that we had when we when we were first coming up. So it is a little bit like I know exactly what you feel, Livius, because we're kind of going through a little bit of that. Not in a way where we're, you know, downsizing into a little shop somewhere metaphorically <laughs> but where the things that we had in the past we might not have anymore fuck man i was depressed about the alley and now <laughs> you're depressed about caleb j ross jesus christ yeah you are right though i was uh was on social media the other day and i saw a couple i'm not gonna name names but i did see a couple um outside of caleb who we do mention his uh his giving up writing we've mentioned on the podcast numerous times but it was just, you know, that like weird thing happens where, where you see just um, a collection of posts kind of together, just chronologically or whatever, that it kind of like takes yeah. something off. I saw three in a row that were people that um, were writing and that that I were, were friends of the podcast. And I, I thought to myself, I was like, yeah, none of these guys are, are, are doing anything, at least in the literature community anymore. So, yeah, that yeah, that's very true. Yeah, and I mean, we've collected, you know, new acquaintances as we've gone on, but I don't know if we'll have that chemistry of, of that initial group that we kind of settled in with in the first year or two. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm going to go start, I'm going to go run a bath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get it nice and warm. <laughs> get it nice and warm, yeah. <laughs> uh, unrelated, because I, I and I want to say this is unrelated to what you just said, because it's going to sound terrible if you try to take them together. The same things don't get us going that used to in year one or year two. And I know we touched on it a little bit in our seventh anniversary episode, but I think you and I talked a lot about more about it offline. That the, the same things that we used yeah. to get really excited about don't cause that excitement anymore. So we're changing with it, too, as the podcast continues to change. Yeah. But I want to say, going back to the alley, the dude that did those commercials was working. Livius didn't mention that. Um, so anybody from Chicago will know exactly what we're, we're talking about. It's that guy that's screaming about, hey, yeah, come down and buy your nipple rings, blah, blah, blah. And like screaming into the radio. He was there behind the counter downstairs. So like every, all the shop was upstairs, but downstairs where you walked in um, looked like a little cafe. And he was behind this counter and he's whipping up these weird like waffle concoctions and stuff. And he's moving things around. And I, I used the bathroom, and afterwards I was talking to him a little bit because, like, I'd asked him where the bathroom was, and I just felt like it was polite to make. Did some... he scream at you in that in that voice? Like, he's like, it's the right back. there. No, he's just like right there, buddy. He was like super nice about it. Um, and apparently, like, you know, he's pretty. He seemed pretty excited about this. He's gonna have. I don't know what a waffle pop is, but he said waffle pop. Hmm. Um, and some other menu items that I don't remember, but like. I think the alley might be turning into like a, a hot brunch spot. <laughs> so a waffle pop um, is a cake pop with a wa but with a waffle. 
uh, according to the internet. Oh. I looked up some right. pictures, and it's like a little mini waffle, but it's on a stick. So that's what happens to you after like 40 years of running like the most punk place in Chicago. Yeah. You make waffle pops. Um, by the way, I, I follow them on, um, I think it's Instagram or Facebook. But uh, yeah, it was like two days after that. They, they posted that they were ready and serving food now. We missed it. So there, we just missed there it. wasn't a lot of detail. I'm guessing it's waffle pops, <laughs> but um, yeah. So so we we were we <laughs> Maybe were there that's what... <laughs> almost close enough to have the alley waffle pop. Now you pointed out to me those fucking tables though. So I know we're getting really kind of hometown Chicago y, but as we were walking out, Rob goes, "Did you see the tables?" He kind of nudges me, and I look, and there's only like three, yeah, like full size tables, but they have the original alley skull logo. Like superimposed on the table, and then like I don't know whatever laminated over whatever that is yeah. that, that they were very very nice looking, and I thought like, <laughs> man, if there was one thing I could just buy out of here, it'd probably be one of those tables. Hey, it occurred to me that maybe he was trying to tell me that he he wanted me to call him Waffle Pop. Like, <laughs> like hey, Waffle Pop's working today. Um, those tables were nice. I don't know if you noticed, but on the bottom floor, um behind the stairs that we had to walk up to get to the shop, there was like more seating and stuff. It looked like it was going to be a, like a main dining room. I did not notice. Yeah. I really, I really scoped this place out. You did. Well, you went looking for the restroom. Yeah. I was casing the joint. So any rate, uh, that's enough about our, uh, our Chicago trip. We did go to a, we went to um, an Austrian cafe. Julius Meinl. And had the most awesome drink. Do you remember what it was called? Nope. Something Drenel. I don't know. Um, let me look at my Instagram where I posted a picture of it, and I'll tell you. Um, in the event that you're ever by one of these unpronounceable places, Rob's going to give you the name of it again shortly. Um, definitely <laughs> get this little, this little, espr- it was espresso and condensed milk and whipped cream, right? Yeah, it was at Julius Meinl, the Dre Madrill House. Madrill House? Dre Madrill House? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. A little Things sweeter than I. It was very rich, very yeah, rich. So good. Yeah, and they get you. They give you that little cookie. I guess it would be a biscuit if you're in. Mm-hmm. Uh, where is that? Um, Austria. Yeah, probably Austria. But anyway, yeah, good stuff. All right. Um, <laughs> we we didn't come prepared with a lot this week. We really kind of took it easy. Um, this week we are getting ready to get back into book reviews um, next week, but there are some other changes coming, which I know Rob just said. It's not like we're downsizing. <laughs> but we're kind of downsizing. But we're kind of downsizing. <laughs> like, right, I think you say those things because you think I won't notice and I'll, like, I'll feel better about it. But there, there are some changes coming from the podcast. <laughs> um, most of them that really shouldn't affect you. But in the event um, that it does in the coming weeks, you look and there's nothing and you can't find a new episode. Um, Rob's going to give you a little bit of details where the new home of the book podcast will be. Yeah, so I'm going to do a little walk down memory lane. It seems to be thematic for this episode. But, like, we started doing our podcast in 2011. And the resources for a, uh, like, a, you know, bootstrap kind of podcast operation really didn't exist. So there was no kind of all-in-one, you know, prepackaged situation available and then the other side of it was we had a guy who was willing to do all of our web stuff for us so um we got started in a very like (sighs) we didn't do a pop-up shop we actually created our we like created our own little lemonade stand and i don't know why i'm going on crazy metaphors anyway um what we ended up having was a bunch of different pieces that go together and each different piece costs us money and each different piece has its own like vulnerabilities. So having a website hosted through this place, having our audio hosted by a different place, all these different things kind of add up into being able to give you guys a podcast. Um, one of those vulnerabilities that we've experienced recently is um, our website being hacked by, I'm assuming Russians. They're the only ones that do any hacking. Yeah, they did anymore. all the hacking. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's not safe. And looking at, I mean, it's not, anyway, it's not safe if if we had, like, um, a community with people logging in and stuff like that. Because we don't, it's really kind of harmless, but, like, also something that we need to fix. 
and looking into fixing it, it, it kind of expensive. And then we it, that made us pause and say, it actually made Livia say, why are we spending all this money? And I was like, oh, we could look into other options. And so long-winded way of saying, we, while we are keeping the bookedpodcast.com website and um, anybody who didn't hear any of these episodes um, won't really experience any change in how they see our content, but we're actually moving all of our content off of that website into a Podbean account. And it turns out Podbean gives us pretty much everything we need um, for one price, and um, then we don't have to worry about if if the web, like if a website gets hacked, it's their website, so they fix it. It's not on us to figure out how the hell to fix a hacked website because turns out hackers know how to do that. I don't. It's like it's like when you lock your keys in your car. The only person that can't, you know what I'm saying, can't get in is you because you don't know how to break into a car. <laughs> That's us right now with this website hack thing. Um, so we're moving to the Podbean, and already we've set up a, a and this is going to get super boring, but a feed redirect. So if you are subscribed to the existing bookedpodcast.com feed, when you try to hit it, it moves you over to the Podbean thing, and then it updates your subscription to the Podbean feed. So you don't have to do anything. It's going to update for you. Um, once Witchcraft. Total witchcraft. Once all that is settled, um, we're just going to redirect our website like at the fundamental level to just point you right at the Podbean thing. So we'll still be bookedpodcast.com, and your feeds won't have to get manually changed. All your subscriptions are going to stay the same. Um, we're just going to be paying way less each month for um, all of our services, and we're going to be more secure. Excellent. And you do a very nice job of explaining that. Um, yeah, so yeah. we're downsizing. Yeah, we're... we're this <laughs> podcast is no longer holds the magic that it did in year one. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm looking up waffle pop recipes because that just seems like the next logical... Originally, it was pie chos. Welcome, yeah, I know. Welcome to Waffle Popped. Yeah, Waffle Pops, um, which, by the way, while you were talking, I was on, on the Alley's Facebook page. And, yeah, that's definitely what they are. I scrolled back a, a few <laughs> posts and found a, a, a Waffle Pop picture. Nice. That's awesome. He was very excited. It was the very first thing out of his mouth. So I have to imagine that the Waffle Pop is the big attraction. Well, you know, it could be that that's like the hot thing right now. And if he jumps on it right away, he can yeah. pull on a bunch of business. So um, I definitely will stop there again for a waffle pop and, and to buy another T-shirt, I'm sure, <laughs> or like a shot glass or something. And then I'll just be sad all over again. But, yeah, I mean, they essentially stole my childhood. Wow. The Star Wars movies and the alley have stolen my childhood. Are you going to be like a sad one of those sad puppies? Sad puppies, yeah. yeah. That's just those stupid Star Wars stole their childhood. <laughs> but I do really kind of feel that way about the alley. So that's not stupid. It is stupid when it's Star Wars. So Oh, that's funny. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, but like here's here's the thing. Um it's efficient and it's gonna be easier and um there's gonna be a bright side, right? We like less work for me, which means I can do more of other things, like actually trying to help make merchandise happen. And, you know, keeping the Patreon updated and stuff like that. I think it's going to I think it's going to have a positive outcome. I'm sure it is. And, and, and this isn't our first kind of migration. We, we've had to change things a few times. And, and yeah. there have always been some challenges. But we always came through the other side and, and always in an improved fashion, I believe. So I feel that the same is likely to happen here. Hell yeah. So um, for the next 400 episodes... Oh, I don't know if did we did we were we unsure about how many episodes are going to be available the last time we talked? Uh, we were unsure. Right. I'm going to clear that up right now. As of this moment, our Podbean thing is is already up and running and everything. And the latest, I want to say 320 or so episodes of the total 400 are available. Um, there's a couple of files that didn't download properly that I have to manually do. So like over the over. Next couple of weeks, it'll all be back. But you will have access on the Podbean feed to every single episode we've ever done. So that's a good thing. That makes me very, very happy. Yeah. I always thought, like, I wouldn't care that they were all there. Um, but I, I care. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's what we've got. We've caught you up on our last week. Um, nothing really of note to talk about this week. I was thinking about this earlier today, and other than uh, kind of recounting our our failed attempt to to prove ghosts are real, um, not a whole lot going on. Yeah, but we can talk about what's coming up. There are a few books that we have on our radar. Um, there's two that are in the month of April. Um, that as long as we get we secure copies of them and everything, we'll be talking about. First of all, I think our next episode, if I'm right, Livius, is going to be the newest Christopher Moore book called Noir. Absolutely correct. Yeah. And then coming up sometime after that is going to be the the new Josh Mallerman book, Unbury Carol, which releases in just a few days. But <clears throat> logistically, we're going to come at that a couple weeks, I think, after it releases. Really what it comes down to is no one got a copy of the book. Fucking all right, so I'm gonna tell this. I'm putting this out there. Josh on on Facebook posted in in January. Hey, Unburied Carol's available through Net NetGalley. So if you're a reviewer, go and request it. So like the same day he posted that, I went and requested it. Last night, I it still was pending, and so like you know, I actually emailed the publicity contacts at the publishing company and I said, hey, you know, this is who we are. I requested a copy. It's I've been waiting forever. Please help out. And I put a screenshot, like a very passive aggressively, like put a screenshot of the pending books thing and like the date I requested it and the date that it, you know, releases. So hopefully my passive aggressive slash actual aggressiveness will get us a, a copy. <sighs> it's or a weird Justin thing. can just email it or mail it to us. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I had a weird thing um happen. I know it's happening to you too. I'm more saying weird to the so I don't know if all the big publishers are listening to this podcast or not, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're not, but I don't know that to be a fact, but I've spoken um, quite often about how weird it is that they sent you like the second or third book in a, in a trilogy. <laughs> yes, you have. Yeah. And lo and behold, I get the UPS notification the other day books coming. I get the UPS package and I go, Oh, they sent two books this time. Good. They're saving on shipping on books. I'm probably not going to review. And I look and they sent, I go, okay, this is the second, this is this part two to something. And underneath it is miraculously part fucking one. They actually yeah, sent dude. both books. So I message Rob and I say, hey man, did you also get two books? <laughs> he tells me that yes, he did, but that they had already sent him one of the books previously. Yeah. So now I have two copies of the first book and one copy of the second book. Oh, so fucking yeah. weird, man. So We're weird. Have to do like a something where people can just like take these books off our hands. I, you know, but what they need to do is they, they, there's a better way to do this, right? The way is you send out a really attention grabbing email that says, "Hey, we're revamping how we do this." You know, up to two or three times a month, we're gonna send you an email. Please look at it and just respond yes if you want us to send you a book. And then they could actually track the ones we say yes to so that they know of their entire catalog what we're more likely to want to review. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because right now they send a shit that's all over the place. They don't know if we're reading them or not. Yep. <clears throat> they don't know if we have any interest in reading them or not. And it seems like there's a better way to do oh, this. Dude. I'm sure it's a totally automated process. I'm sure that we're on a list and they just send out whatever books apply to that list. Yeah, but I'm just saying there's yeah, – I, I, I'm sure you're right. I just think that there's got to be a better way to do it that, that we could still be somewhat automated, right? Someone would formulate an email. It goes out to all their reviewers. There's a responder. If you trigger the responder, they send you a book, and they track that they sent you that book so they can start to look at patterns of what to send you. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. It all seems pretty easy. Listen, if you are a major publisher and want to pay me a million dollars for this idea – I am happy to uh, explain it to you again more slowly so that you can understand how to implement it. <laughs> and it's just you playing back this episode, but like at half speed. <laughs> 33 rotations per minute. Wow. You really took us in the way back machine to. Um, mm -hmm. The whole episode uh, has been yeah. that way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Noir is coming up next. We got Unbury Carol coming in the future. Um we're in talks, and this is going to be in the summertime. Um, we talked about this before, but I want to kind of tease it because it's on my radar right now. 
there's a James Patterson book that's coming out, co-authored by former President Bill Clinton. And um, I love how you couldn't even say that without a giggle. It's just so stupid. Um, and uh, we are going to have we 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 got an offer uh, of a guest reviewer, um, someone who also has written a book with James Patterson. So Rob Hart uh, offered to to talk about that book with us once it comes out. I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, I like Rob Hart a lot. I'm I'm looking forward to genuinely reviewing this book too. Like not not from the the tongue in cheek poking. I want to see what this is. Like I I'm actually yeah. uh, feeling the anticipation of it. It's coming um, out in hardcover. Um, yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I was thinking though is, I have an idea. Uh, uh-oh. Now, I know that we don't interview authors whose books we haven't um, read. I, I, it hasn't happened. I mean, we've always been able it was either a short story or something, right? Like, we've never just flat out talked to somebody that we had no no knowledge of their, their writing. Not until StokerCon. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that, you are correct. Outside of StokerCon. Um, but, God damn it, man. I think we can get Hillary Clinton on because she's still going around telling people <laughs> what happened. <laughs> And really to anybody that would listen. So I, I think if you hit up Hillary Clinton's publicist, we could get her on uh, and, and have her on booked. To do as an, for just as an interview? For whatever. Who cares? Okay. Listen, I don't I, want to bump Rob Hart. But if Hillary Clinton will review Bill Clinton's book with us, I'm totally bumping Rob Hart. I think you would understand. I mean... I'll reach out to Hillary Clinton's publicist if you want me to. Sure. Just tell her that, hey, we'll, we'll give her a platform to to tell us what happened in the election going on two years ago. Um, but also to co-review her husband's book. All right. That's how I'll pitch it. This is going to happen. And I'm going to have to do it now so that we can like tell the, the listeners that I actually did it. I was going to so. say we're definitely going to read that email on uh, on an upcoming yeah. episode of Booked. Dear Mrs. Clinton, um, she's a she's a local girl. She she was she grew up in Park Ridge, Illinois. She did same place as John Wayne Gacy lived. Hey, there you go. Two famous people, all from that same block. Yeah, and I say block because Park Ridge is really like two blocks long. It's not it's not a very big <laughs> suburb. So it's... I thought you were going to say something really rude, like two famous clowns or something. Oh no, I did not. Yeah. No, no. Wow, no, because we want to get her on. So. Yeah, I and I don't. I listen. I would never want to um, offend John Wayne Gacy. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. This reminds me. So I, I got a friend. Um, this is going back to high school. Um, so the nineties. Um, a, a friend of mine. This is going to be a boring thing, but it just I don't know. It, it, he went to a high school called Illinois Math and Science Academy. Have you heard of this? I have. Yes. So. That's kind of a prestigious school for math and science in, in Illinois, and it's very college-like. Um, you actually live there, so they have dorms and everything, and it's like it's like pre-college. So you've got these like I, I think it's the second, it's the it's junior senior year of, of high school. Um, so you're what is how old does that make you? Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Yep. And you're living in a dorm with a bunch of other doofuses your age. Um, and with roommates. So it's like a college experience, but like years before you're supposed to, you know, a couple of years before you're supposed to have that. This friend of mine went to this school and his roommate was this super creepy dude um, who was just kind of an asshole and just weird and kind of like, he was the kind of guy that had a bunch of swords laying around. You know what I'm talking about? Um, yeah, proceed. You got a bunch of swords laying around, don't you? I had a couple of swords laying around when yeah. I was much, much younger. <laughs> Maybe I'm judging that more harshly than I should. But anyway, this guy was the main message is creep. And um, apparently he was obsessed with serial killers. And um, at one point, and I, I, I hope I have the timing of this correct. He had gone to a prison to interview and successfully got, you know, allowed to interview, I think, Jeffrey Dahmer. Dude, that's fucking crazy. And I'm just looking up um, when Dahmer died, just so it's not so someone's not like he died. In, well, no, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Ninety four. So this I was, was just gonna, listen. 
I didn't go to the Illinois Math and Science Academy, but yeah. you're almost describing me because I was about to say I'm pretty sure it was 94. Yeah. So yeah. this was in the time. It was probably 91, 92, 93, somewhere in that time. So, yeah, he successfully, as a like a high school kid for like a paper or something, or just because he was a super creeper, like actually got an interview with Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, I don't know the follow-up to that story, if this guy ended up being a normal contributor to society or you know they found a bunch of dead animals i'm not sure where this went but like it was a little bit creepy i want to um just say that i i also was a little fascinated with serial killers and, and not <laughs> but not not in a way like i didn't look up to i mean and again that you know who would say well yeah because i clearly want to go out and kill a bunch of people I'm just kind of fascinated with what um makes them do that like what right. makes them tick and then like their behaviors so when gacy was painting and when he was selling his paintings, probably right around that same time in like the mid nineties. Yeah. Early nineties. I, I kind of wanted to buy a Gacy painting. That's uh yeah. welcome to serial killed. Oh, so there are a number of them. Cause I looked them up online. Uh, invaluable.com has a ton, a ton of them, um, listed on, uh, on their website. Uh, from a small oil on canvas board entitled Dahmer Skull, that's uh, estimated to go for two to three hundred dollars, up to ones that command five to six thousand. I'm sorry, five to seven thousand pounds, not dollars, wow. pounds. Yeah. Wow. Um, all right. Uh, I I I I feel like I get it, but that I'm just not there. Oh, one thing I want to say is that, like I, I kind of mentioned it before, but I've, I've kind of mentally doubled down on. I'm probably going to just dig through the audio from our Cuba Road experience and drop some, you know, maybe three, four, five minutes of little clips from here and there from that, um, just so you can hear a little Jesse and Misty and and um, I don't know proof that we did it or something. I don't know. I thought some of the stuff was entertaining. It just wasn't enough to make an episode out of. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd like that. I mean, I guess I could listen to because I have the video still. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's all we're doing this week. Uh, I apologize if I'm bringing the energy. I had to work overnight last night, and I only got a couple hours of sleep, um, so I'm a little tired. I just want to apologize also if next week's episode is a little late. Um, I will be out of town. I will be in the beautiful city of New Orleans um, early next week for my semi-annual. Um, uh, you know, journey to New Orleans. So that means drunk day drunk Livius for a couple of days. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh there's a there's a chance next week's episode might be a little late. If it is, it's all on me. So I'm looking forward to the booked podcast listening group being just pounded with Facebook live videos of Livius walking through the French Quarter like eleven AM with like a grenade in his hand. Not like a real grenade. <laughs> What, is Although, it, that could happen one day too. Let's be honest. <laughs> <That's> way, <laughs> with the doldrums we went through in this episode, oh, um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a low key trip. There's not a lot going on down there. This is going to be a nice, relaxing. Um, this is not going to be like Halloween. So, um, just looking uh, looking forward to getting out of Illinois um, for uh, for a little bit after our failed attempt at uh, at an episode of Spooked. Um, <laughs> Just getting away for a little bit. And uh, yeah, there there might be some photos, maybe some live video. We'll see. Excellent. Well, have a great trip, Livius. Thanks, buddy. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Um, join us next time whenever Livius gets back in town. We're talking about Christopher Moore's book, Noir. Until then, I'm Rob Olson. And I'm Livius Nudd, and keep reading. All right, welcome to Book, where two guys hunt ghosts. I'm Livius Nudd. And... and I'm Rob Olson. We are joined today by... Misty Bennett, all the way out from Texas. Welcome, Misty. Thank you. And Jesse Lawrence coming down from Minnesota. So if anybody listened or saw our Halloween um, extravaganza last year, we had said the next time these two were up, we were going to go to Cuba Road, and we were going to look for ghosts. Yeah. So um, I, we're not even sure if you're going to see this, because we're not sure what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to uh, make our way to Cuba Road, or approximately six minutes away. So until then, we'll just kind of be uh, be talking a little bit. So uh, guys, how was your how was your trip into Chicago? Fantastic. Misty, how about you? Not memorable. So we're about to turn on to Cuba Road proper. Um, yes. 
we're a little bit, we're a distance away from where all the action is supposed to be, but Cuba Road in general, from like front to back, is supposed to be spooky. Um, we'll see if there's any. I've been on Cuba Road a bunch of times. We're gonna pass a marsh, so that's exciting. A marsh. Um, what, what exactly is a marsh? <laughs> like a swamp. Uh, oh, okay. okay. It's like a swamp, right? It's where you put bodies. Yeah. It's a swamp <laughs> with long grasses. Now, you guys did some <laughs> fucking Bill Nye's in the car. <laughs> you, uh, you guys did a little bit of research on this. Can one of you kind of recount some of the things that uh, have been seen or that we can expect to see this evening? Uh, I believe there's some hitchhikers out here. Some, there's oh. a phantom hitchhiker. Yeah. So I don't know if I mentioned, I don't see. want to stop you guys. Rob and I discussed this. I don't know if he shared this with you in the last couple of days. But if we see a hitchhiker, we're stopping. We've already made this decision. I love it. Because the hitchhiker would have to sit in the back. Oh, so, so. They're going to have to sit bitch. So. 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 Ghost, yeah, ghost hitchhiker. Good thing I brought my shiv. Now, if I remember correctly, the hitchhiker, though, never gets in the car. Like, if you pull over for the hitchhiker, They will vanish. Yeah. So if the so hitchhiker is in. still there. <laughs> we're just going for a really uncomfortable um, ride. With <laughs> Really, we only stopped because we thought you were a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> The other things that we can expect to, we want to be looking for is there's a spectral vehicle that will um, speed up uh, and tailgate you and like flash the, your, their blinkers, their bright, mm-hmm. their bright lights at you, um, but then like vanish. So, Interesting. Uh, and then there's a woman. So there's supposed to be a ghost house. There's a house house that doesn't exist, but you see it, and you may see a woman uh, outside the house holding a lantern, um, but it's not actually there, and it'll vanish. It is super dark out, so I don't know if we're going to see any houses that we're not supposed to see or, or even know that, you know what I mean? Well, that's the thing. How do you know? That's true. It's very true. <laughs> um, so we're approaching right now uh, Route 59, which um, the cemetery on Huber Road is another thing um, where it's supposed to have glowing headstones, and you'll sometimes see orbs, and also you'll see, like, the image of silhouettes of people, like, in the woods. And then they, they kind of shift around and stuff. So we're going to see that soon. That's going to be coming up on our right-hand side. Um, how likely are we to just get arrested if we just, like, kind of pull into the entrance of this place and hang out for a little bit? Um, I don't know, because I don't know exactly what town this is. Okay. Um, so this is probably, I mean, we're all adults, so this isn't a bunch of kids. This is actually dumb adults doing this. Yeah, yeah. Which I think buys us a little more favor with the, uh, with the police department. Yeah, we're going to have to keep. So I think, yeah... Usually at cemeteries, you just get told to leave if you're there too late. It's just okay. <laughs> we, have a, we have someone who goes to cemeteries a lot in the car, which is helpful. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, we're, we're not going to be doing emo shit out there, so <laughs> cops will probably just be like, get out of here. Well, here is a cemetery, oh, but I think we the missed cemetery. the entrance to the cemetery. Yeah, we just drove past. All right. We definitely just want to hang out of the there. We're going to continue on for a little bit, and on the way back, we're going to try to pay extra close attention where the cemetery is. And that front gate was open. Which yep. to me means the cemetery is open. Yep. Which means we can pull in there. Yep. Agreed. And we gotta turn our headlights off to uh, catch the glow, I think. Okay, alright. Okay. Uh, how much farther? Keep going. Okay, There's okay. supposed to be a bridge somewhere. Ooh. Um, we did a little recon mm-hmm. earlier in the day just so we knew where stuff was. And I didn't see it. We didn't see a bridge. Isn't the thing with ghosts, the less light there is, like in total, the more. Likely, likely they are. are. To see them. Yeah. I think so. Olivia's just light shamed you. <laughs> <laughs> or Message Jesse received. Light-shamed. Jesse, Jesse. light shamed you. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting. I am terrible with names. I've been calling Jesse <laughs> Jerry the entire trip. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where that came well, from. So, well, you have a friend named Jerry. I've heard you mention. Yeah, and you know what? I was telling him about how we always used to make fun of Jerry. So, oh. so the road seems to have gotten darker. Is I it just thought me? you saw something. <laughs> it got really, really dark out there for a little bit. So, um, I would have to say if there's an area there's ghosts in, this looks promising. That might be a ghost car. That could be a ghost car. That's very modern for a I think it was car. an Acura. Oh, yeah, we're also doing this on uh, less than an eighth of a tank of gas because it was cold out and I didn't feel like stopping. I mean, if you so, go... So, if the car actually stops, we might have to get out. Yeah, and walk for a while. Or, I mean, like, call for a tow truck or something. I guess this is the like a good place for a ghost. Right? Ghost train. 
All right, so now we have a far reduced speed limit with zero visibility, man. It, it, Whoa. That's, not, that's not what I want. That's the scariest thing that's happened all night. <laughs> Frog in. Wait, you turn this on. There we go. All right, I got a little bit of light on the road. All right, this doesn't look... I guess to the left here looks a little creepy. To the right, or I don't know, is that a firehouse maybe? Looks like it. I don't know. Probably where the ghosts gather. Hang out. All right, we are at Cuba, Cuba Township, Township Road... Di yeah. Cuba Road Town... What the fuck does that sound that even Cuba mean? Township Road District. That didn't make any sense. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. I think I was telling Misty and Jesse the other day that I was back... Right, it's bridge ahead. Horse crossing. crossing. <laughs> this might be the bridge, guys. Bridge ahead. Oh, here we go. Yes. Now we park on the bridge, right? Is that what we're supposed to do? Wait, can we listen for dead babies or something? Isn't that? Oh, that was a different. That's those dogs. <gasps> Why is there like a, the like road. a auntie road? Did you did you see something cross the road? I was yeah, looking I think in the rearview mirror animal, the ghost car. I was trying to figure out. Oh yeah, that was, was a raccoon. raccoon. Yeah. Right on. No, yeah, this is creepy raccoon. as fuck. I know you guys can't oh, see this on video. Is, is that house actually there? What house? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, I am gonna I am gonna speed up a some, little uh, bit because there's a car behind trees, us that's uh, speeding up and flashing its brights. <laughs> it's not flashing its brights. There is an actual car. Behind us. <laughs> it's a car. Now I could see where people came up with this stretch of road. Why yeah, it's right. this not is friendly. Yeah. Syria do... is rife with raccoons. Lousy, lousy with raccoons. So. Uh... <laughs> We're not being followed, then I'm gonna reverse into up this driveway. I oh think. man, all the best stuff happens on videos when a car is going in reverse. Right. Like, that's what happens in the horror movies. <laughs> this is where that jump scare comes in. Yep. This is like the darkest night ever, too. If you guys look out to the left, like you yeah, can't see it's... shit. Was it just me or that sign when we were going over the um, bridge? Like, it, there was, like, a witch or something on top of that horse, not just a normal person. Oh, I did not notice. Well, there'll yeah. likely be another one. Coming yeah, I don't think way. they usually put people on the animal signs. Or... <laughs> so, so far, we haven't seen much. I will give this road um, five stars for creepiness. Um, I don't think I'd want to be out here walking. Nope. Uh, I was just going to say, maybe we walk a little bit. Five stars for the quantity of raccoons. Mm -hmm. Here's that raccoon again, or maybe it's a different raccoon. <laughs> it's the same one. <laughs> That's actually the hitchhiker. Nothing yet. Um, no ghosts. Yeah, this is getting kind of bo like, I don't want to say boring. Maybe I'll say that just to challenge the, <gasps> oh, there's a train. train. So now we're actually going to be trapped. Yeah, this is where the ghosts can attack. There's a train going by. I think I saw another raccoon. Yeah, that was that ghost Acura again, I think. I think those people are just driving back and forth going, I don't see shit. Is that the <laughs> same <laughs> Kia? <laughs> Must be ghosts. Olivia, did I give you the map? <laughs> give you the map, right? Yes. No. You have the map. I was giving you the map. It's the third time we've <laughs> driven past here. So, cemetery coming up on the left. Let's go brights for a minute and see if that helps. Misty, do you believe in ghosts? I believe in energies. And so. What kind of hippie bullshit is that? It sounds hippie bullshit. Mm -hmm. right. Jesse, you? I think this is it. You know, I'm not sure. I want to no, believe. Not right here. Yeah. Nothing seems to be glowing. Yeah. No glow. I'm going to turn my camera off and then all the cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Like a goat with like seven arms is going to attack us. <laughs> Pretty impressive. I don't think goats have arms, so seven of them would be a real thing. Right. <laughs> seven more than I was expecting. <laughs> no ghosts yet. No, no ghosts yet. Um, I'm, I can't say I'm surprised. Um, I'm sorry, Jesse, where are you at with ghosts? Oh, I'm not. I don't really know. You know, right. Rob. I don't believe in ghosts. Um, I do believe in spooks. I do believe in spooks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if the job pays enough, I'll believe anything you tell me. Uh, I. Uh, you like you that? Know, you like it? I. I. Ernie yeah, Hudson. It's a I, Ghostbusters I, quote. I believe. I believe. You believe in ghosts? Yeah. Do you th how much of that has to do with your Romanian? None, uh, actually. Nothing? I mean, not really. I, I do have um, my family. Wait, is he wearing purple has right some, now? Has some beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> has some beliefs about things like I, think we, I feel like we talked about this on the podcast, like how you leave water between, like in Romania, like where my parents grew up. The windows were like double paned. You could open either the inside or the oh. outside or both. Yeah. And like when someone died, you would leave water out for them. My mom says that when her God, was it her grandfather that died. They left water out and the water was gone like the next morning. 
So, um, so I come from a family that believes. Um, I don't think that's why I believe, though. So you guys keep talking uh, about this while I get guests. Excellent podcasting. This is how we do. Excellent, excellent podcasting. I, uh, the gas pump here is the slowest gas pump in the history of gas pumps. So even at like $3 a gallon, it's going to take forever to... Great. Yep. Welcome to Pumped. <laughs> Where we review gas stations. <laughs> Next we'll be taking the camera right into the restroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I have a friend who's a professional ghost hunter. Wow. A guy I went to high school with. He's a, During the day, he's a Chicago police officer. And then on whatever weekends and nights, he has, like, he's got a, a, an old ambulance that he's converted into where he puts his equipment. And he goes out and does, like, the overnight stays in houses and stuff. That was awesome. He was on a couple, like, those ghost hunter TV shows. And he used to post stuff on Facebook occasionally about, you know, mostly sound clips of, like, you listen really closely here, it sounds like someone saying, Daddy, or whatever, like, you know, someone's saying, <laughs> someone's saying, <laughs> someone's, someone's saying of course out of said, all the things Daddy. they could be saying, <laughs> someone's saying, welcome to Booked, <laughs> which is what they're going to hear oh, in Lake Zurich a few years from now after Future Rob is uh, no longer with us. I'm going to haunt people and talk to them oh. about books I've read. Hell yeah. I, uh, I didn't know if I told you guys, but I uh, I saw Future Rob again. Do you guys remember Future Rob? <laughs> I absolutely remember We did see Future Rob again, and I will tell you, in the future, Rob has less cool friends than me because we saw him with two really dorky guys at a restaurant. Um, and I was going to try to get photos, but we wound up, um, an emergency came up, and we wound up not having dinner there. But uh, we did definitely see the guy that, I, uh, that I'm convinced is Future Rob. Yeah. I mean, it's the bleakest future, if that's future me. I gotta tell you, I was like, man, he really downgraded his fucking friends in the future. I kept thinking, why don't I like him anymore? Why won't I talk to him? Why is he hanging out with this shit? Are you so you're concerned saying, by this? Like, what what happens? You're, so you're, you're telling me it wasn't future Misty and future Jesse? No, no. <laughs> so, supposing there are ghosts, and you can actually see that shit, do you think you're more or less likely to see them outside versus say you know I'm, I'm like hunting through a closed down asylum or or some really um, old house type thing so I think that um, I think that they have to be tied to a place somewhere I'm more yeah. of that belief I don't know if that's exactly what I would say but I think there are plenty of places where there are no ghosts and I think there are probably some places where ghosts are a little a little on the heavy side of so I think that could be inside or outside. Now fat shaming ghosts. I, uh, <laughs> um, inside or outside. I always thought that graveyards were a little weird, though, because I don't... Like, people are dead before they get to a graveyard. So sure. I don't know that that's the place... Good point. That, you know, either someone can haunt a place where they died, that would make the most sense to me. Like, when you're... Whatever life force leaves your body, like, it just never goes anywhere, so you're in that spot. Um... But the cemetery, like, that's where they drop off a corpse and bury it. So unless there was some kind of death in the cemetery, I don't know that I, uh, that I bought into... Like buried alive shit? Yeah, well, that, that would call, that would do it for sure, right? I think if you're going to become a ghost, being buried alive is probably... Uh, You'd probably be pretty pissed off if you were buried yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah. So... I would haunt the fuck out of someone. Now that looks... So you guys saw it in the daytime. Is this a really, like, old cemetery? Because it looked kind of shitty and old, like, when we... It's actually out. well. It's well maintained. Yeah. Okay. I don't think but it's, it's old, but it's tiny. It's been around since like the 1820s or something. All right, so that's that's legit old, right? I mean, that's pretty old for a uh, cemetery. Uh, it's right here. Yeah, we're passing so it I again. I just really wish there were less cars. <laughs> so we're totally gonna get the cops called on us. All right, let's see if there's. We're any gonna do this really quick. We're gonna turn around in this little parking lot. There's no like. There's nothing that says you can't be here at night. How are you not videotaping this part? Yeah, the sign say. says, please close and lock gate when you leave. All right, this is as far as we're going, though, because in, in a second I'm going to back up and get us uh, out of here before the cops show up. All right, you can see headstones. You could. <laughs> you you said we had to turn the lights out. Yeah, because we wanted uh, to see oh, the glow. Oh, to see the glow? Yeah. Is there a way to turn around, or is it just a dead end up? dead end up there? Yeah, I don't think there's... That looks like we'd have to back all the way up. Alright, we went all the way in. Um, is anybody looking behind the car? I'm looking to the side. I'm gonna try to turn off the headlights again. 
Do you see that glowing? I do that and I take my foot off of this, right? Then that should kill our brake lights too. Yeah, you do. Yeah. All right. That's how cars work. All right. Um, well, we we're here. I don't see any glowing. Thank God I don't see any raccoons like scampering in front of the car either. I'd piss myself. And all I see are lights from. Hey. Yeah. So, um, for listeners, <coughs> um, the cemetery is really, really tiny. What is that, 40 yards that way? Yeah. Maybe another 30 behind us? Yep. So it's probably maybe the size of a football field in total, maybe a little longer and, and just as wide. Um, that headstone's actually on a tree. That's kind of interesting right there. Maybe that's a, Maybe that's where the tree died. Maybe that's where the tree died. All right, I'm going to back us up a little bit and prepare to get us out of here before we get locked up. Or run over a headstone. Yeah. This is totally going to run into a headstone. That's my headstone uh, (laughs) alert system. All right. Um, Well, I will say that uh, for a ghost hunting experiment, this uh, this has been uh, a little bit of a failure. All right, so... um, that was nothing. Yeah, so we're on the final leg of our ghost hunting expedition. I realize this isn't as exciting as uh, as we wanted it to be. Well, I don't know. To be honest with you, it's probably exactly as exciting as I wanted it to be. <laughs> because being faced with, um, you know, ghosts, demonic ghosts or something was really not on my agenda. Um, but there is another possibility that we didn't talk about tonight, which is... Uh, falling Chinese space shuttle debris. <laughs> so we are out here in just a car, completely unprotected from this uh, space shuttle that's uh, supposed to be plummeting to uh, to Earth somewhere in the U.S. sometime this evening. So uh, our chances, I think, are one in Sorry. a trillion. Sorry. That's alright. The light. By the that's way, me. guys, this is when, I got out of the car, when I got out of the car, uh, Misty was shopping on Sephora <laughs> when I walked past her She's window. way yeah. committed to yeah. this, uh, yeah. this whole ghost outing. Yeah. It's um, because she's pissed. She wanted to go to Sephora earlier today, and we're like, dude, the mall's closed. So. Well, and I thought today being Easter, people rising from the dead and shit, like, this would be a, yeah. good, a good night for this, too. And yeah, this, and, like, yeah. we have a variety of, like, we got a vampire in the car. Yep. An atheist. Misty's, like, Southern Baptist or something. So yeah, I mean, I didn't think anything was gonna happen. I've, I, I've, we've lived here. I've lived here forever, and I've gone down Cuba Road plenty of times. Never even like a hint of anything close to paranormal. Well, that was kind of scary. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> oh man, is that really there? Is that the Easter Bunny? Is that an actual? It's a bag, bag of garbage. garbage. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ghost it's a bag puppy. of garbage. Wait, it's it, a puppy. It looked like a very ominous <sighs> rabbit. Everybody, everybody knows when you put a puppy in a bag, you throw it in a creek. Right. You just leave it out on the street. That's common knowledge. Oh, jeez. But it did look like a rabbit, and it is Easter. I yeah. thought it was the Easter bunny. So. All right, so in a second, we're going to be driving past the cemetery again. We will not be pulling in because uh, we are outside of daylight hours. So, hold on a second. Jesse, am I incorrect in saying that sign was facing the inside, so you really didn't see what it said until you were leaving? That's very true. That seems like really poor way to... The other gate has a sign on it that says, please close and lock gate when you leave. Yeah. And it's not addressed to anyone specifically. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so That would be funny, though, if it said, Fred, please lock, <laughs> close and lock the gate before you leave. Fred's always leaving that gate open like yeah. a dick. You know what happened? It, it, you know, no one locks it. That means no one has to come and like open it either. So, I bet it's true. Their house. Fred's house. like, this is gonna save house. me forty-five minutes tomorrow morning. They He's essentially a ghost line. payroller now. You get it? <laughs> yeah, I ghost get it. Ghost payroller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the mob used to have and stuff. Uh huh. Yep. And the government. Well, Chicago had a lot of that too. Anyway, yeah. we're getting politics. Oh, all right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna keep talking until we get back to the uh, back to the uh, the book studio number one, uh, nice. Rob's place. Number but, the uh, one and only. Wait, is there another studio? Well, I mean, I, I record oh. somewhere too. Oh, I go to the cemetery. What are these guys doing hanging out by the cemetery? Mm. Is that the cops? It's not the cops. It's Fred. It's Fred checking. Fred's Why didn't nobody lock the gate? There's a sign. Uh, there's another car just hanging out. Wow. Uh-huh. Maybe we're like, maybe everybody's like, oh, these guys are onto something. Oh yeah, no, you know what this is? This is the local neighborhood watch got called. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. 
think someone misinterpreted when someone was talking about all the spooks that hang out on this road. It was actually the feds and not oh. ghosts. God, I, thought, I thought you were yeah, going to go a whole different way with that, yeah. <laughs> Zero good. Well, we'll have to play back the video later and see if anything appears that we didn't see. Right? Yeah. Uh, in the moment. I think that's a lot of. Uh, like, or I'll download that like with ghosts. We don't know it. Go to the app store, see if there's like a ghostify app where you can just like add ghosts to whatever video that you already have. Orbs, or orbify, daddy, orb. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys said you don't have to laugh because when people are listening, they'd be like, "Shit, did that sound like someone just saying daddy on the recording?" <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Misty, it sounds better when you say it. <laughs> I don't have anything else to talk about as far as ghosts go. Yeah, I, I mean that was a little bit of a, a little bit of a letdown. What we should have done is gotten like a plain white dress and like a really long like black wig and <laughs> or a sheet and the just ring, put, the ring and just had like had it like it was just you and me and Jesse <laughs> and like we had dropped Misty off at the you know earlier I had thought, in the cemetery. I, I had thought I was like, do <laughs> I know anybody I could get to go stand out there and hitchhike? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, and when we stop, just jump at the bushes. It's really cold out. Well, we're in the suburbs, so we're having a nice suburban conversation about it. <laughs> we are. Yeah. The soup said Panera. <laughs> Welcome to souped. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're not getting old. So you guys talk about the soups they're eating? <laughs> oh, my gosh. We're not getting old at all. I had a heck of a baked French onion the other day. <laughs> I'll tell you, a soup podcast would get some listeners. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably it's right about that. foodies. Would be like, oh my god, these guys are amazing. All they do is talk about soup in the suburbs. Yep, and sometimes they're funny. The one guy's kind of racist. <laughs> Home safe. Missy is acting a little possessed. <laughs> so that might be. She's just a woman, Rob. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're cutting video. Not that you can see anything, but um, and, and the audio, right? So I don't know if we're doing anything else. So final thoughts when we get inside? Final thoughts when we get inside, yeah.